can't be serious. That's what I have to do? That's right. <laughs> if you want my help getting into Fangthorn Prison, then you have to take out the leader of the Street Vamps. With them out of the way, I won't have any more opposition in taking control of the whole district. I don't care about gang politics and aspirations. The only thing that matters is... Yes, yes. You want to break your renegade parents out of prison. Here's the bottom line, Phobia. Either you use your powers to eliminate one of my competitors, or you find your own way into that maximum security prison. What do you think about that? I think I don't have a choice. So, where do I find these street vamps anyway? That is what I like to hear. Go to 81st and Norris, and look for the 24-hour donut shop. There should be an alley to the left. Head down it, then take your first right, then your second left. That's where their door is, anyway. The rest will be up to you. Call me when the deed is done. Doom Daddy, out. The call ended, and Phobia glanced down to the black screen of the smartphone. Slight acidic bitterness festered in the pits of her stomach, but she batted it away. If she wanted to free her parents, then she had to do whatever it took. Phobia stood about five foot six inches and was fairly built and toned. Ten years of Black Ops training had worked wonders for her, all thanks to her godfather, Reaper. Her hair had been dyed fire truck red, and she kept it fairly short, ending around her jawline. However, her hair had been concealed beneath her solid black helmet. She had light green eyes, and for the most part, her skin was pretty pasty. Phobia's outfit consisted of a military-grade combat Kevlar jacket, a pair of tactical slacks, Black Ops standard-issue boots, and a pair of black operative gloves. A visor was over her eyes, both for protection and for displaying information. While the helmet covered her ears, there were sensors that fed information to her within it. There was a small button on the side of the visor. She pressed it. Did you get that, Reaper? Yeah, sure I did, kiddo. I'm sending you the directions to your HUD. I'll give you the intel while you're en route. What would I even do without you, Reaper? Thankfully, we don't have to address that yet. The route should be displayed on your visor now. Phobia moved over to the street and then mounted the hover cycle that she had borrowed from Reaper's garage. How that man had so many toys, it was beyond her. The hover bike flared to life and Phobia pulled out onto the street rather than try to use one of the sky lanes. As she zipped along, following the directions via the visor, Reaper spoke to her. According to the Sagan City police records, the street vamps are an organized gang of drug pushers. They specialize in a highly illegal substance called Dreadlord Blood. In fact, it appears that they are the sole distributors of it. Dreadlord Blood? What does it do? It makes people who use it hallucinate and think they are immortal have powers, and also even gives them a craving for unnatural things like human flesh and blood. It's pretty expensive, and there have been reports that people who use it usually murder kidnapped victims during the use. Think of it like a violent party drug. Great. I guess that's where the name Street Vamps comes in? Actually, the leader is supposedly a really big goth vampire witch fan or something like that. So she passed the aesthetic on to her gang. Goth vampire witch? That's my thing! I'm so going to kick their asses. Somehow I knew you were going to react that way. The leader is a five-time offender, and on the city council's most wanted list for drug pushers. Her name is Cecilia San Marco. Well, too bad for Cecilia San Marco. She has to die. It's the only way. I just hope this Doom Daddy asshole really has useful information. If he doesn't, he's going to be next. I will personally go with you to confront him. Oh wow, the Angel of Death is finally coming out of retirement for little old me. 
technically, I'm already out of retirement. Anyway, you're almost there. Get ready, the street vamps are dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure if I mess up, you'll be right there to tell me. Phobia parked the hover bike across the street from the 24-hour donut shop. It was fairly late at night, and the streets appeared to be empty. Her stomach swiveled inside her, and despite her talking up a big game, she knew it was going to get a little rough. Then again, she was Vanessa McMasters, a.k.a. Phobia, daughter of Phantasm and the Shadow Queen. No matter what, she would succeed. She just had to. She paused briefly and then stepped into the alley between the donut shop and the adjacent building. Tension seeped into her pores from all around her, and so Phobia filtered her powers into her hands. She took her first right and then started to stealthily move down the alley, hugging one of the walls. Phobia took the second left and moved further into shadow-saturated streets. Up ahead, about 200 feet. I see them. There was a building at the far end of the alleyway with a blue metal door. A single light was over the door, and a pair of goons were leaning by the door talking. Perhaps 110 feet or so ahead of her was a dumpster against a building wall. Slowly, Phobia crept along the walls all the while watching the pair up ahead. She stopped when one of them looked down the alley and she crouched down into a shadow. Her black tactical outfit camouflaged her well and he went back to conversing again. She continued again and this time she didn't stop until she was behind the dumpster. Are you going to be able to get them both in one swoop? Uh Uh-huh. Her max range with her fear amplification was only about 30 feet which meant she had to close within the last 50 feet. Phobia drew in a deep breath and then moved. From this distance, she saw the thug's attire. They wore black pants, had black boots with shiny metal spikes or studs in them, rocker t-shirts, and they wore black lipstick and had black painted nails. One of the thugs looked up at her as she came within 20 feet. Phobia thrusted her hands toward them, Blue and purple energy snaked out of her palms like slithering eels, and they collided with both of the guards. They both stopped where they stood, their pupils enlarging rapidly. One of the street vamps became super rigid, which was a great sign. The other one, however, pivoted as if he were going to run into the building. Phobia jumped forward and drop kicked him in the chest. His body slammed against the side of the wall and started to convulse. No, no, bunnies. Phobia grabbed him by the throat and she started to inhale. (sighs) Thick blue smoke started seeping from his eyes and mouth and his body rocked violently as the smoke left his body. She inhaled again and again until the smoke stopped. The man collapsed to the ground a moment later. Did that guy say bunnies? People are afraid of different things. (laughs) You're afraid of commitment. Okay, ha ha, little Miss Smartass. Just absorb the other guy so we can start the real fun. Roger that. Phobia put her hand on the other guy's shoulder to steady him, and then she absorbed the essence of his fear as well. Her body bristled with collected power. She dragged both of the unconscious bodies to the side, where the shadows were thickest. Heading in now. I'll try and hack into their systems through Wi-Fi and provide you with better intel. Good luck. You got this. Phobia opened the door and moved inside. The interior of the building had once been a residential set of apartments, with a stairwell leading upward toward the second floor. The blue door was perhaps a back door, at least when this place was reputable. It was quiet, but it was well illuminated. The flooring was covered in white and black tile. Each of the doors for the apartments had been removed. Phobia moved up to one of the doors and she peered inside. A trio of gothic looking thugs stood about around an air hockey table. The male was dressed in a three-piece suit that appeared a little too big for him. 
One of the Gothic women, the one playing against the man, wore a black dress that billowed out quite wide at the ends. The bottom of her dress came up to her upper thigh. She wore white leggings and knee-high leather boots. She also had a black bow in her hair. Her makeup consisted of black lipstick, thick eyeliner, and black eyeshadow. The last person had feminine features, but Phobia couldn't tell what the gender of the person was. Maybe they were non-binary. They had long blonde hair, thick eyeliner, and wore a rocker t-shirt and pants that had way too many zippers. Ugh, can you believe Cece's making us work tonight? It's not fair. The Vampire Bachelor season finale is on tonight. I can't believe you watched that crap. <laughs> You know it's not real, right? They script all that shit! Yeah, and besides, The Bachelor is like, not even a real vampire. It's already on a fake-ass premise on that point alone. Oh, screw both of you. Just let me dream, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna submit my application to be on it next season. Can you just imagine? Oh, I can cling to that sexy-ass dude and then whisper into his ear. Bite me harder, vampire daddy. Ah, I don't care if it's real or not, the illusion is worth it. Shit. Phobia behind you. White hot panic flared up inside her as she turned around to see a brutish man ram his rifle butt toward her. At the last moment, she pushed herself back and landed on her back right in the middle of the doorway. The large, brawny, gothic, clown-looking thug stood over her. From the corner of her eye, she noticed the trio regarding her as well. Phobia pointed her palm toward the thug standing over her, and her hand became encased in a bright, purplish-blue sphere of energy. A moment later, a beam of energy melted the goth clown's head and neck from his shoulders. Oh shit! We have an intruder! The goth clown's body fell backwards as Phobia got to her feet. The trio drew energy pistols from goddess knows where and aimed them at Phobia. She walked inside the room and she gestured one of her hands in front of her. A bubble shield of bluish purple energy emitted from her, just in time for the energy blasts from the pistols to collide with it. Oh, shit! It's a guardian. Is this a bust? Phobia smiled at the notion, for it was a ridiculous idea that she could ever be a guardian. She sent forth another energy blast, and it bore a hole in the goth woman's chest. You bitch! The non-binary thug charged her, and actually entered the small bubble. It faded a moment later, just because of the duration rather than anything else. They punched and kicked at Phobia, but she blocked and dodged, all the while keeping them between herself and the armed goth guy. I don't have a shot. Don't just stand there. Get your ass over here and help. Phobia palm struck the non-binary gang member in the face and then blasted them Ow. with another beam of energy. No! They want my ride home! Now I'll have to take the bus! You bitch! The last remaining street vamp thug aimed his energy pistol and fired, but Phobia ducked in time. She sent forth her fear amplification ray, and the man froze in place. His eyes glazed over, and soon, Phobia grabbed him by the throat. She inhaled deeply. What are you doing to Morris? In one swoop, Phobia tossed Morris's unconscious body toward the trio of new street vamps who had come into the room. The energy bullets from their pistols drilled into him, and it provided just enough cover for Phobia to flip over the air hockey table. She crouched down behind it. I can't believe you got caught off guard like that. It's not my fault. Did you know there's a show called Vampire Bachelor? Um, yes. The best season was the one four seasons ago. The whole complex knows you're there, including Cecilia San Marco. Well, it wouldn't be fun if it was easy. Phobia raised her energy shield, and then she emerged from behind the air hockey table. The trio blasted at her over and over, but Phobia closed the distance. She extended both of her hands, and the fear amplification rays zapped out into two of the thugs. Bubba, Megan, no! What did you do to them? Phobia gave her a double hand helping of fear amplification. 
One by one, she inhaled all their fear energy. So how full are you anyway? What are your options? If one person's fear gives me 10 points of fear, I'm now carrying about 35 points, for example. I'm guessing that energy blasts take two points and energy shields take five. So I'm good for about 16 energy blasts or I can raise seven five second shields. If I find anyone else, I can top off a little more before I deal with Cece. I've tapped into their surveillance network. Drug production is on the second and third floor, and there are three guards on each of those floors you'll have to dispatch. The boss is on the fourth floor, along with two heavily armed guards. How heavily armed? It looks like they have high-powered energy assault rifles. But you're going to need to be more concerned with Cecilia San Marco. She has an energy minigun. A what now? <laughs> How am I going to deal with that? I don't know. If you try for a frontal assault, you'll probably die. Even your shields can't withstand an energy minigun's rapid fire for long. Maybe I won't have to do frontal assault. I have a plan. It's crazy. And I'm going to need the fears from other people, too. I can't wait to see what you're thinking. Phobia snuck through the second and third floor, taking her time to get close to each of the thugs. She amplified them, harvested them, and then left them alive. They wouldn't wake up in time to stop her from enacting her plan. As soon as she finished with the thug on the floor, she pressed the button on her visor. Okay, Reaper. This is important. Can you direct me until I'm directly under where Cecilia is standing? Why would you want to know... Oh, goddess. Yep, just like that time in Auto City. Direct me. Reaper gave her instructions on where to go. Phobia entered one of the bedrooms, and she gazed up, as if being able to see the dreaded gang boss. Rather than use 100%, I'll use 85% of what I have stored. It would suck to deal with the boss, and then be empty when the other two thugs come in to investigate. Oh man, this is going to be great! I'm recording this for future posterity. Phobia held her hands out in front of her as if she were holding an imaginary ball. She flowed most of her energy into her hands, and a massive sphere covered both of them. The light was so intense that all other colors faded away, leaving only bluish and purple hue. A slight hum danced in the air. And then Phobia sent the blast above her. It melted through the floor within seconds. Someone screamed. There was a loud explosion. The whole building rocked. The beam faded and colors returned to creation. Something grotesque and bloody fell from the hole that had now been created. Another hole had been bored into the roof. There were panicked screams from above, but Phobia focused on the body before her. Only the front half of Cecilia San Marco was left, and her eyes were blank. Get out of there! That beam lit up the night. I saw it from here. Guardians are on their way. Forget the other thugs. Run! And so she did. Phobia ran down the flight of stairs and out through the front door. She rounded the corner, but then ducked behind a dumpster. Several hover transports soared overhead, headed for what used to be the street vamp's base. When she got to the street, there were already guardians starting to land right beside her bike. Instead, Phobia crept along the alleys and moved further away from the area. I have to leave the bike for now. It's okay. I think you're safe now. Do you want to try and call Doom Daddy? Let me get a few blocks away first. After a few more blocks, Phobia stood behind a bus stop the street was still pretty empty. She dialed the phone number given to her. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me the bright laser beam on the news was you. The boss of the street vamps is dead. Now. You're going to help me, right? Oh, I can't help you. But I know who can. If you go to Dark Elysium, a bar in the district, You'll find a man who goes by the moniker Wayfinder. He can get you into that prison. <laughs> He'd better, or I'm coming for you next. 
I don't like being threatened, little girl. You had better watch it, or you'll make a serious enemy. Call me little girl again, and you'll taste my 100% energy beam personally. This Wayfinder better check out. He will. I hope to never see you again. Phobia ended the call, and then tapped the button on her visor. You remind me so much of your mother. <laughs> Thanks. So, do you want to come with me to this dark Elysium? Or are you sitting on the sidelines again? I'm sending you the directions to your HUD. As soon as I suit up, I'll be en route to meet you.